welcome everybody. Uh, this is how to start in mobile marketing. Uh, before I begin, I just want to know who's actually done some mobile marketing here. So just raise your hand if you have. Okay. Who's made money with mobile marketing? Okay, a, few, a little bit less hands. All right, so what I'm going to outline here is five mistakes that I keep seeing over and over in mobile marketing and what you could do to avoid them. This is going to save you money. This is going to make testing offers easier. If you're a media buyer, if you're an advertiser, it's going to make sure that your offers work for mobile. It's just, you know, it's, it's really good. And I want this to be interactive, so if you want, just scream out a question. It doesn't matter. You know, I'm here to answer as much as I can. <clears throat> so what I'm going to cover, obviously mobile growth. You're here because you know mobile's growing and it's, uh, you know, it's something you need to pay attention to. Uh, I'm going to go over the five mistakes. Uh, then I'm going to talk about making the most of mobile, how to maximize your ROI and uh, basically get as, as much as you can out of it. Then I'll summarize it and then I'll open up for Q&A. But again, if you do have any questions while I'm presenting, just let me know. All right, so you know, you're, you're looking at me thinking, why should I listen to this guy? Uh, well, the truth is I've been in this industry for a really long time. I think this is maybe my 10th affiliate summit. Um, I've been in the space seven years in the direct response marketing space. Uh, I've been running exclusively mobile traffic for over two years. I published a guide on mobile, uh, mobile marketing. It was a 14-day mobile mastery guide uh, that did really well to help hundreds of affiliates and media buyers learn, the, learn how to buy mobile. I also started a company called MobAF. It's a mobile performance network. It was acquired by MediaWiz, uh, who is a Matomi company. And uh, we've also built a tracking solution. This is a, actually something very important that I'm going to touch upon. Tracking is absolutely vital for mobile. So um, you know, just keep that in the back of your head. If, if you walk out of here and all you remember is this, tracking is what's going to make or break your mobile campaigns. All right. So why, why do I like mobile, right? Like, why didn't I stick with Facebook or display? Um, I like it because it's fragmented. Uh, mobile is very, very fragmented right now. There's literally hundreds of vendors out there offering traffic, offering services, um, and there's no clear dominant winner. It's not like Google just dominates the whole you know, search. It, it's, it's very fragmented. There's a lot of different players out there. The other thing, the supply is growing much faster than demand. Brands and advertisers can't keep up with the amount of users that are becoming mobile uh, users, and, and especially internationally. This is the first time people have access to the internet. They can't afford computers, but they could afford, uh, afford a phone with a basic internet function. So mobile is absolutely massive on that front, and there, there aren't enough people capitalizing. So what does that mean? It means cheap traffic, and I like cheap traffic. Um, there's also new opportunities. You know, mobile is exciting. It's evolving really quick. You got push notification. You got SMS. There's new platforms that keep popping up. Um, and of course, there's traditional traffic obviously going mobile, like Facebook. The other thing that's really kind of exciting for me, especially for you uh, advertisers here, is mobile offers you an opportunity to create a new funnel. You know, everyone has a funnel here, but with mobile, there's more touch points. You know, you can follow up with an SMS. You could do a click to call. I mean, there's a lot of cool things you could do that you can't do on the web. And then also mobile SEO. It's practically untouched. If you've done a search on your phone, you'll just see, you know, the, the results are all over the place. And, uh, you know, it could be a huge opportunity for the first mover. All right, charts. Please observe. It's growing. I'm not lying to you. These are real numbers. So I'll just skip that. Okay. Let's get to the mistakes. That's why you're here, right? You don't want to make mistakes. You don't want to waste money. Okay. So the five mistakes are, the first is using strategies from other channels. This is a, this is a big one. Um, the second is evaluating quality too early. And this applies both to advertisers and publishers. You know, they, they, they try mobile and they make decisions without enough data. The third is focusing on smartphones only. You know, most of us here in the space probably have an iPhone. Some of us, like me, have an Android. Uh, but guess what? Most consumers don't have smartphones, especially internationally. Another is using the wrong tracking and analytics. I express the importance of mobile tracking. And again, if you walk away and just remember one thing, it's mobile tracking will make or break your mobile campaigns. And then the last is not diversifying. I mentioned it's fragmented. A lot of people get stuck with one traffic channel or just one way of doing marketing, and then 
you're missing out on a lot of opportunity. All right, <clears throat> so why is mobile different and why can't you use your existing strategies to, uh, you know, to make it work? So it, it, mobile is different. I mean, that's just a fact. Any, anyone who's tried it understands that as soon as you start uh, you know, marketing. How is it different from display? Well, in display, really, you're just focusing on placement and your creative. Uh, with search, you know, you're focusing on keywords. With social, it's demographics. Email, obviously, is this whole other ball game. But there's these mobile-specific variables that are absolutely crucial to performance of your campaign. Um, the best way I could describe it, you know, I was really thinking about how can I illustrate this, this uh, difference. And the best way I could describe it is mobile marketing is 3D marketing. Okay, so what do I mean by 3D? There's this third dimension in mobile that you have to consider. And in here, you know, on the left, if you look at the 2D, um, I'll, I'll, I'll use display as an example, right? All you're really focusing on is good creatives and the placements where your ads are shown. And the combination of the two, when you find the right balance, will give you the results you want, the ROI or whatever. With 3D marketing, what happens is you have this third dimension of things like carrier, handset, platform, all the mobile variables that can make a huge impact on the campaign. For example, if you're doing display buying, do you really care about browser? Do you ever look at that? No, because it's not going to make a huge difference to your campaign. In mobile, the difference between Android or iOS could literally be the difference between profit and not profit. You could run a campaign, it might make money with Android and not iOS and vice versa. So there's a lot of these variables, and, and I just showed you a couple, and they all overlap too. That, I mean, that's why it's such a headache and such a mess, and again, tracking. Walk away, tracking, tracking, tracking. All right, so um, you have carrier, handset, the creatives, the, you know, different sizes. You have the operating system. All these things make a really, really big difference, and they all interplay. So adjusting one will affect the other elements. Like some phones are exclusive to certain carriers, as an example. So if you block a carrier, you'll block certain phones, and vice versa. Okay, so mistake number two. Evaluating quality too soon. Uh, quality on mobile can vary drastically. I, I, haven't, I haven't seen um, this level of quality variance uh, in any other traffic source I've worked in. It, it's literally, you know, you could send a thousand clicks, zero conversions, or you could send a thousand clicks and it just converts gangbusters. Uh, it just depends on where it's coming from. Mobile has a lot of click fraud. We all know this. Get over it. It happens. There's a lot of click discrepancy because of slow network speeds. Again, get over it, it happens. Your goal is to find where the quality is. Um, so the other things that are kind of weird is that you have like native apps and you have uh, mobile web. And, and this is where, uh, I'm gonna bring this up like now just to kind of give you an idea of what you could do to, to kind of uh, fix the issues I see. I see in-app traffic, so traffic from coming from applications have more of this variance than mobile web. Um, again, this is a big takeaway. If you're writing notes, probably write this. Mobile web, mobile formatted web traffic, tends to be more consistent and convert at a steadier rate than in-app traffic. Okay, so if you're playing Angry Birds, the banners from there are gonna perform inconsistently compared to if you're visiting weather.com and you see a banner there. All right, um, so then there's also different traffic types, obviously, right? I I'm talking a lot about display, but we have push, we have incentivize, we have search. I mean, it, there's a lot of different types, but th what I'm gonna be talking about mostly today is display type advertising. Um, another thing that makes a huge difference is carrier versus Wi-Fi traffic. Carrier traffic tends to be slower. So your load speeds are, are very, very important, both in your tracking, your website, uh, anywhere you're sending the user, it needs to load very fast. Um, Wi-Fi traffic tends to be lower quality. So this distinction is, again, really important. And this is what I'm getting at. You know, you have to consider this third dimension because by blocking Wi-Fi, again, another note, by blocking Wi-Fi, you could often increase the conversion rate of, of uh, whatever offer you're running. I don't know why. It just That's what it is. Um, and again, obviously there's different platforms and devices that all have different limitations. You know, uh, as phones are converging with other uh, types of devices, it's getting, you know, it's getting really crazy to a point where you have to pay attention. For example, phablets, you know, these giant cell phones, you know, they look like a tablet, but they're really a phone. Um, I mean, they perform very different from a traditional phone. Um, 
or obviously a, tr a traditional tablet. Okay, <clears throat> uh, third mistake, focusing on smartphones only. Okay, when you look at this chart, right, this chart shows you different countries and the smartphone penetration. Now, to the right of that, I have a glass, and the glass is, uh, to me, half empty, because I'm a pessimist, so I just see things in reverse. Now, when I look at that chart, people keep talking about smartphones, but think about the opposite. Think about how many feature phones are out there. You know, smartphone penetration is still fairly low, and I know it's growing every day, but you have to understand, feature phones are still massive. Some of my best campaigns have come from feature phones. Feature phones tend to be older users. It's more difficult to take action, so the quality is gonna be higher. Uh, and internationally, people can't afford smartphones. So you have to consider feature phones. They still exist, they're gonna be around for the next you know, two to five years. So when you're thinking about mobile, stop thinking smartphones. Don't get crazy with, uh, you know, it needs to be touch screen and it needs to be like complicated jQuery. Keep it simple, remember, 50% of your visitors are going to be coming from, smart, or from feature phones. And no one's touching them. No one's talking about them. The traffic there is dirt cheap. All right, so then there's other devices, obviously. I already talked about some of these. You got the feature phones. You got tablets like Kindle, iPad, uh, Nexus. You got phablets. Now you have wearable devices. I mean, this is, we're trying to kind of uh, t test some things there uh, that speak to your phone. You know, I actually got to play, play with Google Glass recently. And uh, it's, it's mind-boggling that the opportunities that are going to be there. So you have to consider other devices. Stop thinking smart devices. Keep it simple. And, and don't overcomplicate things. All right. This is the big one again, the, the tracking. On mobile, because there's so many different types of devices and so many different technologies, the, the thing that we got really used to in the performance space is cookies. Right? We talk about cookies. Cookie the user. That's how we attribute conversions and you know, cookie, cookie, cookie. But guess what? There's no cookies on mobile like there is on web. A lot of devices do not accept cookies. Uh, you know, iOS is crazy with their privacy, so you can't track using cookies. What we suggest, uh, suggest and what we do is server-to-server -server tracking. It's the most efficient and most accurate way to track. So you're going to get a real uh, picture of conversions if you use this. If you rely on cookies, you're not going to get a clear indication of what's working. And again, I just listed some things here that just to, to show you what a mess it is on mobile. You got UDID, Apple IFA, OpenID, Odin, Android ID, device fingerprinting. These are all technologies, and it's, it's, you don't have to worry about it. If you switch to server to server, most of this is, is just not even something you have to really think about. All right, so um, different you know, tracking solutions out here. Between our companies, we have two solutions. I mean, they're, they're both a little bit different, but depending on what you're looking for, they're going to meet your needs. We have the MobApp Tracker and MobIt. And both tools use server-to-server -server tracking, and they give you this granular analysis that I was talking about where they'll show you your carriers, your handsets, and exactly what's performing for you in terms of conversion rate, the EPCs that you're getting, uh, things of that nature. So both tools are free to try. Sign up, give them a whirl, let me know what you think, and uh, obviously we welcome feedback on that. All right, mistake number five, not diversifying. As I've mentioned, mobile is very fragmented. Uh, there isn't a single dominant player. I mean, if you take this chart that I put up here and I was to show you the search marketplace, it'd, be, it'd look very different, right? There'd be like maybe a dozen players. And this still only is probably the top of the iceberg of the players in mobile. So I, I just want you to understand that there's constantly new entrants. The technology is moving really fast. Mobile RTB is, is catching up. And there's going to be a, a new platform probably every week for you to try. And I suggest try them all because you don't know which one is going to be the one that really takes off for you. Um, and the other thing that's interesting, you know, I was actually just talking to one of our publishers. Yeah, yeah you calm. <laughs> and, you know, he'll have success at a platform that maybe doesn't do as well for us. So, you know, it's really important to kind of build relationships with these different vendors and figure out which one is going to give you the, the results that you're looking for. All right. So making the most of your mobile budget. The most common thing I hear is I spent $500 and I didn't have a single conversion. That, that's like every time I talk to people about mobile, that's what they tell me. So these are just some things you could do to, to kind of uh, use your money more efficiently. The first is block Wi-Fi traffic. I already mentioned this. Blocking Wi-Fi traffic, again, it'll just give you a more steady 
baseline to, to, to look at the results of your campaign. Wi-Fi is where a lot of the fraud happens. Wi-Fi is where a lot of the kids clicking on things happens. Blocking it just uh, will be a better conversion rate right from the get-go. Uh, the other thing I mentioned already is start with uh, mobile web instead of in-app. Native apps, for some reason, just don't perform as well. So start with mobile web. Okay. Another very, very important thing. If you're running run a network, you have to track site IDs. There's a lot of sites out there that are very aggressive with their placements, and the, the quality is going to be low, the conversion rate is going to be low, and you're going to waste a lot of money. When people tell me they spent $500 and zero conversions, if they track site IDs, I bet you nine out of ten times that 80% of that traffic came from one site ID. You know, your ad for some reason got queued up in that site ID, it was making that site money, but not you money. And uh, a perfect example is like Moco Space. You know, their quality is not great. You can make it work, but they suck up a ton of inventory in, in, most, in most ad networks you'll work with. All right, the last one is speed kills. I can't express how important this is, especially if you're doing international. Keep your load times as fast as possible. I'm not just talking about the redirects. I'm talking about your actual website destination, okay? Uh, minimize the forms. Get rid of any extraneous code. Uh, get rid of any JavaScript you don't need. Make the forms very, very, very basic. You don't need to go crazy with landing pages. Speed kills. If somebody clicks on your ad and they go to a page that doesn't load, they're just going to hit the back button. Okay, so keep it literally web like 95. Like literally maybe just find a coder who never learned like modern design and just tell them like, just build me a page that looks like it's from 1995. Um, that, that's just how it is, honestly. The simpler the page, the better it's going to convert. We have a lot of advertisers that come to us. They say they're mobile optimized. We send good traffic and it doesn't convert. And then we test it on our phone and we realize, you know, th there's nothing we could do when the page doesn't load properly. It's too heavy. You know, there's too much code. Things that you think are going to function might not function on an Android. You know, not everyone's using an iPhone. And feature phones, forget it. You know, you need it dead simple landing pages. All right. Wanted to show you this as well. Um, one of the most important things in marketing is to remember the context, right? Um, on both sides, I have uh, examples of two advertisers that I think get it right when it comes to banner creatives on mobile. The first is Zeusk. Zeusk has done really good. And if you look at these creatives, I mean, this is kind of what you would expect to see on a phone. You know, very easy to read. Uh, and from a performance standpoint, just so you know, these get very high click-through rate and they convert. These are the kinds of ads that work. But then also, you know, in case there's branders here, I wanted to show you the brands could get it right too, you know, not just direct response guys. So if you look at Bank of America, again, you know, they have star ratings. They have, like, buttons that people are used to seeing. They have pictures of phones, you know, they say available. Uh, you know, in the Play Store, whatever the case is. Like, in, in that one, it's an Android, the second one down on Bank of America. That, that's an icon that you're used to seeing. You know, that, that's what you would expect to see on a phone. Now I'm going to show you um, what not to do, okay? Now just compare these ads to what we just looked at. I mean, does anyone want to point out, you know, like why these ads are probably not going to perform nearly as well? Yeah. Too much, too, exactly, exactly. Anything else? Yeah, too much copy. They didn't consider the context, and that's what a lot of people do. They, they, they come up to us, they take their web assets, and as I said, don't bring your existing you know, uh, methodologies. You've got to treat mobile different. They just take their web assets, shrink them, and think it's going to work. Like, no one can read that. I can't even read it. You know, it's, it's just, it's not going to work. You have to consider people are on phones. They're used to seeing things. Their attention spans are even lower than they are on social. You know, if you don't capture their attention in like, I don't even know, like 0.01 seconds, I mean, you're, you're already lost that user. Okay, so key takeaways, and by the way, the Q&A is going to be the best part, so. But key takeaways, mobile is here, okay? You have to jump in. If you're going to go and play that game of let me try it a little bit, you're, you're not, you're not going to succeed. You really have to invest the time to make it work because it is different from other channels. Uh, the other thing is forget what you know, right? I, I don't mean the basics, obviously click-through rate, all that, it's still important, but don't think about it as, let me take my existing strategies and just transfer them to mobile. You have to treat it as a new channel. Uh, in fact, our most successful affiliates that we work with, mobile is the first channel they started with. Our least successful, usually 
um, come from other channels, you know, because they, they, they just can't adapt as quickly. But people who have never had experience with any kind of marketing, when they jump into mobile, they pick it up very quick. Last one is track, track, and then track some more. Honestly, if you're not tracking these mobile variables, you're leaving money on the table. Oftentimes, it's a simple little thing that you'll see if you're tracking that maybe blocking this one phone will increase your ROI to where now you're profitable. Um, and the other thing is obviously mobile marketing technology is moving really, really fast. So all you have to do is keep it simple. You know, stop worrying about it. Just keep things simple. Keep them fast. Keep it light. Um, and let the technology kind of uh, take you in the direction you need to go. All right, questions? Yes? It's the same creative, just the sizes are going to be a lot smaller. Usually feature phones will have smaller screen size, so even less copy. <laughs> and again, uh, same as the web pages, you want your creatives to be as small of a size as they can be. I mean, you know, to, to a point, obviously, that you have to be able to read it, but small creatives work fine. Right, so Matomi, so Maba is a Matomi product, which they're working on pre-acquisition. Maba App Tracker is our product. Eventually, it's going to be one and the same product, obviously, but for now, you just it, what's great is you have options, right? So you could choose which one you like and uh, use that platform. But eventually, all the features that are in one are going to be in the other. So um, really, it's just a preference thing at this point. No, I'll, I'll give away right now. Uh, why not? Because <laughs> here's, the, here's the beautiful thing about mobile that I love. I could tell you the campaign, the creative, and the traffic source, and you're still not going to make money unless you're tracking the mobile variables. Because you don't know what phones, you don't know what carriers I'm targeting. Okay? My favorite traffic sources for new people to learn on, uh, AirPush. AirPush is good. The ad, they're getting better making their ads less intrusive. They used to be very intrusive. But it's a good place to start. It's scalable. It's Android only. It's Android only. That, that's the other thing to remember. Uh, a good like uh, run a network type um, company is Millennial Media. Their self serve M Media is, is really good. They have all the things you need to get going. They have site IDs. They have granular tracking. They have uh, ability to block certain things that aren't working. Uh, they just acquired JumpTap, which was also a good one. So now that they're together, that that's actually a good thing. Um, places that I would av avoid, Buzz City. Just avoid that like the plague. You can make it work, but it's a terrible place to learn. Um, let me think, what else? I, I would start there. Honestly, I'd start with those. I think those are the best testing ground types of networks. Are they all uh, typically CPM? No, they offer CPM and CPC. Um, OK, so let's talk about CPM and CPC. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. All these ad networks are just trying to maximize their eCPM. So it's really a preference thing. Um, I found that with CPM, it's just the traffic comes in more consistent. Uh, but it's really up to you how you want to handle that. Can you tell us trends in uh, CPM prices recently in the past couple of years? Yeah, they're definitely going up. Uh, they used to be you know, dirt cheap, but they're going up. Uh, I think, I forget which network I was talking about or talking to, but they said in the US so it's around like uh, 30 to 40 cents uh, CPM across the board. And this is just to show you how cheap mobile traffic is. But again, because the quality varies so much, don't look at price so much. Because people come to you and say, I'll give you half a penny a click, and you're going to be like, oh my god, amazing, I'm going to kill it. Complete garbage. So the price shouldn't matter. What should matter is that you're getting good mobile traffic. And then you know the price, you could always negotiate. Any other questions? Well, I mean, I, I think banner advertising is going to be around a lot because of what's happening in the RTV space. But uh, people are doing interesting things. Like um, there's a ad network that is like voice. Like it basically it's, uh, it triggers a actual like talking message, you know. So that's kind of interesting. 
Uh, interstitials are, are interesting to me on, on mobile. I don't know what's going to win, but again, for me, I don't care. I just try them all and see what's working and what's making me money. And if it's making money, then, you know, obviously I invest in it. But um, I, I wouldn't sweat too much about that stuff. I would just try, try it all. Like push notification, for a long time people were saying it was going to go away, and they're still around. So just try it all. And remember that it, it's kind of uh, cutting edge, so like a lot of things may seem like, oh, I, I don't know how I feel about that type of marketing, but it, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of like the web back in the day. It's a wild, wild west right now, so you might as well just try it all and see what works. Actually, no, actually, we haven't done any video. Um, I've never done video on display either. Um, I found for performance sake, uh, you know, I, I just like to keep it very simple. Again, I'm trying to minimize, you know, the, uh, the workload. I just want to get the performance to the level I need it to be at. And with video, it, it takes a lot of effort. And I know load times are going to be an issue. And it's going to be harder to track performance and banners work. So any other questions? All right. Well, uh, I'll be around if you uh, want to talk to me. I'll be around on the show, and I'll be over at the Matomi booth slash MediaWiz. So uh, feel free to reach out, and I could answer any questions in private as well. Thank you again.